Christ! Model! I've been getting really frustrated playing War Thunder recently, so I figured that I should try to channel that into something positive. People always shout at Gaijin to fix War Thunder, or that they should have an update dedicated purely to quality of life improvements, but most of the time, no one says what they want in a unified and concise manner. So to try and curb that, I thought I would make a video on what I would like to see changed. Hopefully most of you agree, and we can get some honest feedback sent through. So without further ado, here's how I would fix War Thunder. The first issue is BR compression. A lot of BRs aren't fun to play because they see constant up tiers against vehicles that they simply cannot compete against. The disparity from one BR to the next can make it incredibly jarring and downright unfair. One good example of this is how you go from having unstabilized vehicles with no thermals to newer vehicles that have both in a single BR bracket. The obvious solution is BR decompression. This could be done by reducing the max up tier possible, or by increasing the max BR, and spreading the vehicles out. Gaijin says that they don't want to do this because it would increase queue times, but to me, I wouldn't mind waiting a few more minutes for a match if I actually had a good time once I got one. I also think that longer queue times would be a temporary side effect. If people are having fun, they're more likely to commit extra time to the game. I think that a decent number of people that quit War Thunder would come back if they heard the BRs were being decompressed. The only real downside I could see to decompression is that some vehicle lineups might be messed up. This does, however, make more room for vehicles to be added. The next issue is close air support and ground battles. I won't go into too much detail about it, since I want to make a dedicated video on the issue at some point, but Revenge Cast makes ground battles incredibly unfun. One solution is to make a tanks only game mode. This is something that a lot of people have already called for. It's not fun to be suddenly pulled out of the ongoing gameplay, just because the person you killed happened to have a G91. This is another thing Gaijin says they don't want to do because of queue times. But as I said for the last point, it will lead to more people playing the game. Though that's the option I prefer the most as someone who exclusively plays tanks, there are other options. It could be made impossible to spawn aircraft until a certain amount of time has passed. Spawn point costs for both aircraft and ordnance could be increased, or AI-controlled anti-air guns could be placed in reasonable positions around the map. If you wanted to have complete control of the skies, you would need to have tanks on the ground destroy some AA guns for you. Not only would that deter aircraft, but it would also add an extra gameplay element. The next issue is that War Thunder is incredibly inaccessible. War Thunder doesn't do a very good job of retaining the people that download it. There are three main reasons that I can think of for this. One, the tutorial doesn't do a good job of explaining a lot of things. Two, experienced players playing low tier often stomp new players, which leads to them getting so frustrated that they stop playing entirely. Three, the grind is way too tedious. I've tried to get five of my friends to play War Thunder, and I've seen all three of those issues happen firsthand. Out of five, none of them continued to play. In order to fix the information issue, I think that the basic tutorial should stay, but that there should be several things backing it up. One, an optional advanced tutorial that gives you more golden eagles for completing it. Two, a sort of training hangar where you can mouse over various parts on a tank, and a dialogue box will show up telling you what each part does, and how it affects gameplay. Three, in the training hangar, there should be links to War Thunder content creators who have videos explaining how the game works. Sometimes people would rather watch videos to learn how games work, but people new to the game probably wouldn't know who to look for. To stop old players from deterring the new ones, new matchmaking rules should be applied. For your first battle, you should play exclusively against bots. This is already done in War Thunder. After that, matches should be filled half with bots and half with people from level 1 to level 5. After the player reaches level 6, the lobby should be 25% bots, and 75% players from level 6 to level 10. After reaching level 10, the player's lobby shouldn't have any bots in them. This would help to ease new players into War Thunder's gameplay, while still allowing older players to play low-tier vehicles. Making the grind more bearable would be fairly easy to do. Increased silver line gains for vehicles while also decreasing research requirements. Some people would argue that this would allow inexperienced players to access top-tier vehicles before they're ready, but I would argue that it shouldn't take a non-premium player more than a year to reach top-tier vehicles. The aforementioned changes to accessibility of information should also lead to overall smarter players. For me, War Thunder's map design is one of the biggest issues the game has. Gaijin bases most maps off of actual locations, with very few alterations being done for the sake of gameplay. This leads to maps that are poorly balanced. In some cases, allowing teams to fire into the enemy spawn at the start of the match. To solve this, Gaijin should focus on making maps balanced and fun to play before making them realistic. Players should not be able to fire into the enemy spawn from their own spawn, or from vantage points. Sitting on a corner should not be a fail-safe strategy. Maps should have a lot of alternate paths, so that matches don't become a game of watch the choke point. Clutter on maps should be reduced so the driving experience isn't so frustrating. I hate losing half my speed because I accidentally clipped a wooden fence. Last, but certainly not least, there's quality control. To be completely honest, Gaijin has some pretty bad quality control when it comes to War Thunder. I don't think this is an issue with the developers per se, 
more the fact that there's so much added per update that things end up being heavily rushed. I also think that having two dev servers isn't enough. The most recent update is a good example of that, since there were a lot of issues that slipped through. I don't know what Gaijin's financial situation is like, but since they can afford to sponsor huge YouTubers like PewDiePie and MrBeast, I reckon they're not in a bad spot. I think that with that money, it'd be better to bring on more developers, so that the workload isn't as harsh. There should also be three dev servers per update, so that people have more time to catch any issues that pop up. And that wraps it up for now. I do have more that I want to talk about, so I might make a second video at some point. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.